Yeah. So, hello, everybody. I'm here with uh, Dr. Fawad uh, Bukhari. Uh, he is uh, in uh, Pakistan, and he has a very, very interesting life story. So he did a doctorate at uh, TOHH, uh, Hamburg University of Technology. Uh, that is also my university, but he was in uh, well, informatics and uh, started a few AI companies. So let us know what brought you to the land. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Professor Otto Paul, and it's uh, so nice of you to have this interview. Um, uh, you're right, uh, uh, my, my PhD was in artificial intelligence, and then I worked in different technology developments in AI. But uh, during my PhD work, I came across uh, some studies regarding the food crisis uh, in this region, particularly. Uh, but this, uh, the, uh, the scope of the food crisis was supposed to, uh, is supposed to actually uh, cover the globally. So I got worried about the future and the chaos that is uh, coming out of this uh, food crisis. And I started working uh, personally with some of the close uh, researchers that I, my colleagues in different fields in soil microbiology, agrarians, and sociopolitical scientists. And uh, we investigated for the 10 years that how we can pave uh, the path to some sort of a stability in this chaos. Uh, we investigated that it has become necessary that we increase the production and we convert the barren lands into a productive land and we increase the production without going into the process of eroding the soil. And by the way, the, the conventional process is, uses the chemicals to actually increase the financial burden as a business and also erode the soil, which makes into a vicious cycle uh, of uh, uh, soil erosion and the financial burdens. So we investigated different yeah. methods and eventually we came to uh, know and we integrated those methods into or transformed those methods into a large scale crop production system that we also named. Those principles were under the umbrella of regenerative agriculture. And uh, yeah. initially, when. Uh, 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 Dr. Yes, Fawad, let, let me interject here. Uh, just to wrap this up, you were successful in the IT uh, business, uh, AI companies, you sold everything because you yes. saw the base for our survival is not IT, but it's the land. If the land yeah. continues to be destroyed, to, to be turned into barren land, into savanna and uh, ultimately deserts, we will all be like poor and die despite all our IT. And so that's what I really love about uh, what you yes. are doing. And you are relatively at the beginning and already you have uh, performed uh, um, almost a miracle to, to revive the land in a well, yes. savanna area in your home country, Pakistan. And uh, so maybe you show, show us around. So you are on the roof of, of the house and maybe you yes. uh, give us a quick tour. <laughs> yeah, that would be my uh, uh, player. So if uh, you have a look, well, look at that part. This is actually a wheat without fertilizer, one third of the water and no tillage at all. And just look at the field, uh, green. And you can see inside the... Uh, the the wheat we have uh, other plantation that is providing the necessary uh, 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 they're playing their necessary part in the overall soil ecology and uh, creating a control for actually it's some sort of a very outstanding ecosystem that is helping our wheat to grow and making the soil rich and uh, let me go on this side now, this is an elephant garlic, and uh, elephant garlic is uh, here in Pakistan requires a lot of fertilizer, sometimes reaching from 0.5 million to 2 million per acre. And But I have given them no fertilizer at all, and I have planted three acres worth of seed in one acre, and the land is able to pick those up. Just look at the intensity of the garlic that is and it's tilled there, all those four acres. 
uh, of elephant garlic without fertilizers, and it's a success story at the moment. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, absolutely amazing, uh, and uh, I'm really thrilled to uh, well see this example because this is exactly the principles of regenerative agriculture, not tilling. And you said yes. uh, no, no fertilizer, but uh, in yes. fact, it is we use the power of nature. So also yes. forests grow, natural land, natural land grows without adding chemical fertilizers or mineral fertilizers yes. and it's rather I, I have seen the validation so, of this one. yeah you, you are reviving the land to, to be productive in itself nitrogen can be yes. produced in the land so we have uh, uh, ten thousands of, of organisms that can produce uh, nitrogen yes, this... from the air and put it to the plant so it's rather not buying fertilizer and now i'm coming to the topic that i really love about you when when i had you for a lecture in my in one of my classes yes uh, you didn't really start with the, the principles of uh, re regenerative agriculture but instead you made a financial balance and that was really uh, yes. quite eye-opening to see that you reduce the cost so it's like uh, all chemicals are so expensive, they are a burden on the farmers, they are destroying the land while they bankrupt the farmers and then um, the big companies come in by the land off. You turn this around, you make it a business model to be regenerative yes. and now you're reaching out to investors to show uh, yes. we can replicate this. Can you talk about that a bit? Yes, of course. What we have found that Regenerative agriculture is, uh, we can term it as a delicacy. It focuses more on the list of don'ts rather than the list of do's. And uh, how you can manage this list of don'ts is the art uh, that is uh, hidden in the, uh, the philosophy or the principles of regenerative agriculture. And you know, you actually don't have to do anything to follow the list of don'ts. That's the uh, important part. And when you are not doing anything, you are actually saving the money. Very important business model that I am proposing here is that the recurring operation cost reduced to zero or five percent of the conventional immediately after the first year, because we make uh, these uh, we prepare the land the very first time, and then there is no tillage, no fertilizers, no pesticides, no weedicides. One third of the water in conventional system we are using 35, uh, 37 thousand cubic feet per five acre of land. But, and five times a crop of wheat in six months. But here we are using 21,000 cubic feet per five acre and only three times. And, uh, and this can be reduced even less in the next mm -hmm. times because the sand gets richer and richer and fertile. So this is uh, the reduction of recurring operational cost is actually a huge thing in the profit margins or ROI. And another thing that is uh, the business model in it is that uh, for certain plants, like you can see the elephant garlic behind me, the, the people here in conventionally are able to put 500 to 700 kgs per acre. I am able to put 1600 kgs per acre. So my production per acre, by the virtue of uh, uh, the number of plants has increased more than two times with the recurring cost reduced to 5% of the conventional. Now, uh, this is where a business model lies when you make Absolutely. it to a scalable level. Yeah. Absolutely. And we so have calculated... Is, uh, let me, uh, uh, just let me interject yeah. here, uh, uh, Dr. Yeah. Fawad, uh, because um, this is important to, to be understood. You couldn't do this in a like in 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 land that has been uh, under agrochemical operation for a long time. You need to convert the land mm. to bring it back to life, and then the yes. roots can go deep. They can get their natural fertilizer from a functioning soil <laughs> ecosystem, and then you can put double the garlic yes. uh, and. With that, you reduce the pressure of undergrowth because the garlic is really covering the field. It's dominating. And with that, you don't have uh, to interject very much or interfere very much. And that saves you 
uh, yes. labor and and uh, also uh, investment. And uh, now one thing to wrap this up. Um, you have also uh, put in place a different uh, irrigation method. You maybe you can talk about that because you have built these dams. So we have seen that before in in another talk we had because like we cooperate in this field. And um, so I have found somebody in Germany doing the same thing, making these dams, and. That was amazing because that's an organic farm that is also very successful with, with growing on these little dams. And maybe you can explain that uh, briefly. Well, well, what we have done is since we are using the no tillage system and in order to transform these methods for the large scale crop system, we, uh, we were thinking that how we can develop the micro uh, canal system and it's actually uh, a very uh, already established uh, irrigation system through the furrows so what we have done if i could show you let me show you here okay so if you would see that there are furrows in between and, and, the, and the water irrigation lines going there and certain uh, small water reservoirs and the dam is just under this part where the water is going and goes to all these furrow parts. And so what we do is that the, that the production is on the raised beds and the water goes like these small furrows and these beds are conserved, uh, are preserved for like 10 to 20 years at least. So the water system just goes into the furrows and seep in into the beds according to the requirement of the plant in the bed and the roots of the previous plants which we did not pull are inside and creating some sort of a nano tubular canal system and we don't say now that we give water to the bed rather we say that we are just putting the water in the furrow and bed is taking the water as per its own requirement because there is a biota there a lot of worms and uh, 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 bacteria, uh, fungus, and porous material to make the biogeo uh, cycles to make it complete. So the porosity of the bed is a, a kind of you can say made by the bacteria or that uh, uh, that world of bacteria, and they create their own ways of how to get the water out of it. When we do the ir uh, flood irrigation, the biota dies, the porosity goes away. And you are actually pushing this, uh, the water into the soil, killing the diversity, the ecosystem. And then you are, uh, have no choice than to put the fertilizer as well, because all the mechanism of biogeocycles, the mycorrhiza fungus and the bacteria and their symbiotic relationship to create the uh, uh, nutrients for the food in conventional system that is destroyed. But here, yeah. we do not put the water onto the bed, but rather on the sides so that the ecosystem of the soil uh, absorbs the water accordingly as uh, what the, the dynamics of the nature is. Yeah, and uh, one, one thing about this system is that uh, your water will uh, uh, seep deep down. So you don't water that often, but intensively. Yes. So the water is to infiltrate deep down. And yes. uh, with, uh, with this, you uh, sort of encourage the roots to go deep. And so you, as we said yes. before, you access yes. a much larger piece of land. The roots go down. They create humus there, deep down into yes. the soil. Uh, when you have the rainy season, the water will seep in. It will uh, create a, a rise in the groundwater level so that you have irrigation water at all because all around you, I have been to the region, it's Lahore region in Pakistan, and in that region, a lot of land is barren. It's given up because the water doesn't infiltrate anymore. And with your method, you make the water infiltrate deep and the fields around you, they still yeah. make this flood irrigation. They destroy infiltration capacity. And when the rains are coming, they are lost. They are evaporating or running off, taking the soil with it. So uh, it's not rocket science, uh, even though you are a AI scientist, uh, but uh, this is something that is very doable. It's scalable. 
And uh, yes. maybe a, a final final word from your side before we wrap this up. How do you see this to be uh, scaled up around you? Well, just a very, uh, very good question. Uh, yesterday, the whole week, uh, from yesterday till the, the for seven days, actually, almost on daily basis, uh, uh, the, the large scale uh, projects were being discussed here on the sites and the investors were coming and why they were coming because uh, of the profit margins that we can project through these type of methods and uh, uh, the most important aspect in in this method is that the, the, the scalable the, the project is the more profit that you would get and these methods are particularly suits when you have a large scale crop a large a scale crop production like in hundreds or thousands of acres then the profit margins would be huge like i can tell you uh, in in pakistani uh, amount for 10000 acres in 10 years the difference of the cost would reach uh, 20 billion pak rupees which would be in euros something like uh, 76 or 760 million something uh, i have to confirm it but uh, the rate is 300 uh, rupees so but it would be 20 billion different and so if you go on a large scale you would have the productivity and you would have the uh, the profit margin would be enormous and what that's what i'm uh, telling that the future food chaos in pakistan and uh, in the world uh, it has become necessary that the um, uh, uh, judicious or, or calculated estimated use of water and an effective and efficient uh, use of the land to produce the food globally for every human is now the core of every uh, 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 every action that the government should take and also it would become a necessary ingredient for the business as well because the bigger the chaos is, the bigger opportunity there is. And uh, for the, uh, the next three or four decades that I'm anticipating, uh, the, the matter of the world would revolve around water and the food and all those methods that can make it financially viable and reduce the operational cost and, and minimize the recurring operational cost would be uh, the key factor in deciding uh, where and how to go. Absolutely. So thank you very much. And uh, just welcome. a few words about the, the model of uh, getting investors in. Uh, so myself, I'm very much promoting uh, family farms, uh, small-scale farming, but on the other hand, uh, I have traveled through Pakistan. The barren land mm. is from horizon to horizon. And we mm. cannot get the families back without starting to uh, make the land fertile again. And uh, yes. I'm also, or well, as you know, we are discussing models where investors will come in to make a model where we rely on family farms people must yes. care for the land and so that can be plots where a family is responsible for a certain plot be it in a in a business capacity or as an employee uh, but uh, we cannot really uh, start with the small families everywhere because the, the land is dying and there will not be a future if that goes on because it will all be desert it's near to that already and you have shown that in this very land with much less water, with much yes. less inputs, you can restore the land. And this is now uh, only your second year of operation. Is that right? Second yes. year? Yes. Yes. This is yes. amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Yes. Fawad uh, Bukhari. Uh, great example. Well. You're one of my heroes. I'm, uh, well, looking thank forward you very much, for well. our further cooperation all the best to you and uh thank you for uh showing us around and uh yeah have a good day bye bye thank you very much have a nice day goodbye